Hello, my name is Jeremy Spafford and I'm an Industrial Controls Sensor and Safety Product Manager with McNaughton McKay. In this video, you will learn how to configure an IOLINK sensor profile in Logix. IOLINK projects have some basic requirements. You must be running at least version 20 of Studio 5000, and you must be using Compact Logix or Control Logix PLC platform. Additionally, as far as hardware is concerned, your IOLINK solution will include a master module, sensor, and a cable connecting the two. In this example, we will be using an IOLINK .io master module. There is a 1734 AENTR Ethernet adapter communicating with the Compact Logix controller via an Ethernet IP network. This example is beginning after the configuration of the Ethernet module and after the IOLINK master module has already been added to the device tree in the controller, organizer, and Logix. This video will focus on connecting the IOLINK sensor to the master module and providing a basic overview of some of the sensor data available in Logix. First, you'll want to take the controller offline and add a device to the IOLINK master. Click on the master module in the device tree and then select the IOLINK tab in the module properties window. From here, select the button that says change, highlight the channel where you would like to add a sensor on the master in this case channel 0, and click the Change Device button. This will bring up a device tree of possible sensors to connect the master module. In this example, we'll be adding a 871TM-M10NP18D4 inductive proximity sensor. Select that sensor and then click Create at the bottom of that window. Finally, click OK in the Change Channel Configuration window. A warning message will pop up telling you that these changes will cause module data types and properties to change. Click Yes. Return to the IO Link tab and select the sensor that you would like added from the organizational tree. The sensor can now be configured through the add-on profile. In a scenario where we would actually configure the sensor for an application, we would click Go Online at this point to communicate with the controller and sensor. For this video, we're going to remain offline and take a brief tour of the device parameters within the add-on profile. The Common tab contains general product information about the sensor specifications. The information in the Common tab is automatically generated. The Identification tab shows device information such as specific vendor ID and device ID for the exact sensor that is configured. These fields are automatically populated per the sensor information. These fields are read-only as is identified with the RO on the screen. If we were online with the sensor, there would be values appearing in these tabs because the parameter values are read, read from the connected IO link device. The Parameter tab allows changes to the behavior of the output of the sensor. The IOLINK master uses these parameters for validation purposes. Changes made to the parameters are applied when OK or Apply buttons are clicked. The 871TM sensor features the ability to change the output switching mode, or the polarity parameter. The factory default mode is not inverted or normally open. When the sensor in IOLINK mode, you can change the polarity parameter to inverted or normally closed. The ability to change these factory default settings that normally would be non-configurable is a huge benefit of the IOLINK technology. Another parameter that we can adjust from this menu would be the switching mode timer. The switching timer is a useful function for manipulating the output of the sensor in relation to its timing. It is useful for precise applications where out the output of the sensor must be precisely triggered at a certain time. Finally, the Diagnosis tab shows the user communication characteristics such as cycle time and IO link revision ID. Once again, these values are read-only and will be visible when the sensor is online. The IO link is a powerful tool that will change the way sensors are used in manufacturing. For additional questions or for more videos like this, please give us a call or visit our website.